Okay, today we are analyzing rational functions. Analyze, analyze, oops, analyze. I got an A in there. <laughs> rational function graphs. All right, so we want to look at this guy and name all of these parts. So we know there's going to be a vertical asymptote. We know there's going to be a horizontal asymptote. There's an x-intercept, a y-intercept, uh, either a max or a min, or maybe both. Who knows? Um, where is it increasing? And then the domain and range. So we need to know all seven of those things. All right, eight, nine, maybe? That's what we're doing. So let's see what the graph looks like. Now you have to put parentheses on everything, so let's clean this all out. Parentheses 2x minus 3 divided by parentheses 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. Ta da! I printed in there just right, I think so. And then let's uh, zoom four and see if we have a picture. All right, can you see that? There we go. The picture is um, the picture is uh, one side going down here, one going up this way, one going this way. So let me draw it the way I see it. Okay, so there's an asymptote right here. An asymptote right here. And then that looks to me like we've got a U-shaped part right here. And it comes back up this way. All right. And then we have something going off this direction. Wahoo! And then it looks like something going this direction. And I know it crosses, so it goes like this. Do, 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 do. Well, that is what we have. Just like that. So if your graph doesn't look like my graph, you might want to zoom in. Um, what I do to zoom in is I make this um, smaller. So maybe I would go down here, I would make this maybe negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. I'm zooming in on the x-axis when I do that. And you can see the parts are still there. And you can tell that this does cross the x-axis and then come back down. That's the deal. So, ta-da. So if you um, want to see a window where it's smaller, you can just zoom in, make your y-min and your y-max um, small. And then when you graph it, you'll be able to see the left side, the middle, and this piece right here goes right through the x-axis up and back down again. That's what happens. Okay, so we need to be able to find all these things. Now then, there's some rules that we have to follow. And for one of them, vertical asymptotes, to find the vertical asymptote, all you have to do is um, what makes the denominator equal zero. So the denominator equals zero. Rule number one, well that's quadratic. I know how to find that. I'll just use my quadratic formula. How about them apples? So I put in six, 13, and negative five. Lo and behold, one of them is x equals one-third and the other one is x equals 
negative 5 over 2. And that's where I put them. This is, uh, 5 over 2 is 2 and a half, so negative 2 and a half. And 1 third is between 0 and 1, so that's where I have that. Right? Vertical asymptotes are fences or barriers that this guy can never get across. It can never cross a vertical asymptote. We just found it. What makes the denominator equal 0? Now the horizontal asymptote has a rule as well. The horizontal asymptote it talks about the degree of the uh, numerator numerator and the degree of the denominator. So here's the case. The degree up here, this is 1. The degree down here, this is x squared. The degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. Right? That means y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So there is an asymptote right here. Boop, boop, boop. Right there at y equals 0. Can you see that? Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. y equals 0. And you say, wait a minute, it crossed it. That's correct. It can never cross vertical asymptotes. But um, it can cross, when you're close to the center of the graph, it can cross the horizontal asymptote. Now, it doesn't cross once it's on that side. It never comes back. This one never gets over there. So, uh, if it's not close to the center of the graph, then once it, it gets across, it never comes back. So, that's the horizontal asymptote. We did it. Now, how can we find the x-intercept? Well, the x-intercept is what makes the numerator equal 0. Numerator equals 0. So, 2x minus 3, that would be um, 1 and a half, right? 3 divided by 2, that's the x-intercept. So, 3 over 2, comma 0. What's the x-intercept? 1 and a half, comma 0. How about that? What's the y-intercept? How do I find that? Well, the y-intercept is what happens when x equals 0. So you have to plug in x equals 0. So if I put 0 in here, I get um, negative 3 on top. If I put 0 here and 0 here, I get negative 5 on the bottom. 3 divided by 5, that would be um, positive 3 fifths. 0, 3 fifths. That's the y-intercept. You see right there, it's crossing the y-axis at positive 3 fifths. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. I zoomed out, didn't I? All right, so let's um, keep going. Can I find the max? Sure I can. All I have to do is look, look at my graph. First of all, do you know where the max is? The max is right there, because okay? that's where it goes up and comes back down. There's a little maximum right there. Um, and then where's the minimum? Well, the minimum's right here. So we're going to find both of them. We'll find the max and the min. Yeah, let's turn this light on so we can see. Maybe that's better? I don't know. Okay, so we're going to do the minimum first. The minimum, number three, it says choose... Oops, I need my graph a little bit bigger so I can see what's going on. Oh, I went... All right. How about negative one to positive one on the y-axis? Negative one to positive one on the y-axis. So now... There we go. Now I can see the whole shebang. So I'm going to do the minimum. So I do second trace, go down to number three, 
It says, where do you think it is? So you got to be on the left side of the bottom of the valley. So I'm going to say the left side is over here, right about there. Okay, boom. And then the right side is over here, right about there. Boom. And then where do I think it might be? Right about there. Boom. What is the minimum? Ooh, negative uh, 0.66 and 394. So that just might be. Let's see, we might have to have more room for that. Okay, the minimum, we'll do the minimum right here. So the minimum is negative 0 0.66 comma 0 0.394. That's the lowest point. That's this bottom right there. Right? Okay. Well, what's the maximum? What is the maximum? Well, the maximum happens over here somewhere. In fact, it might happen over here. So let's make it a little bit wider. And then I'm going to zoom back in. I'm going to go back down to uh, negative 0 0.3 and positive 0 0.3 and see what I see. Okay, so I can see there's a little bump, right? There's a little bump. Can you see that? A little bump. And so I'm going to find the maximum. I'm going to go to number four. And it be on the left side of the little bump. Yes, sir. I'm right there. And how about on the right side? Okay, there we go. And then back in the middle somewhere. What is that maximum value? It is 3.66 comma 0 0.35 look at that ta-da we did it all right now we have to know those points in order to answer the question about increasing so remember we have to say the x values where the functions increasing. Are the x values that make y get bigger? You know. So if I'm riding my car, remember you always start on the left side. If I'm driving my car, I'm going downhill. Woohoo! And then if I'm driving my car over here, I'm going downhill. Woohoo! Until I get to this x value. This x value is the very first, this is the lowest point on that little um, U-shaped thing. Looks like a little U-shape. That's the lowest point. Now, where does it stop going up? Well, it goes up forever. It never hits this asymptote. Where's the asymptote? It's at one-third. So from 0.66 to one-third, That's where this side is increasing. What about the other side? This one's going up, 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 up until it reaches the maximum. Where's the maximum? Well, it starts at one third, remember. Starts on the other side of one third. And then it goes up, up, up until it reaches 3.66. And after that, it goes down again. So it's decreasing over here. It's uh, increasing right here. It's increasing right here. Decreasing right there. And decreasing right there. Right. So it's going downhill, downhill, up, up, down. That's the deal. That's the ticket. Right. Um, usually when we talk about this, we talk about end behavior, but that's not on this one. But end behavior, on the left it's getting close to zero, and on the right it's getting close to zero. So the end behavior, on the left side it's approaching zero, on the right side it's approaching zero. And then finally domain and range. The domain is how wide the graph is, and 
what numbers can I use? Well, I have a picture on every number in the whole wide world, except I don't have a picture at the asymptotes, right? So the domain is all the negative numbers up to negative 5 over 2, because that is the first asymptote. Then there's a picture in between those two asymptotes, 5 over 2 to 1 third, and then there's no picture at 1 third. And then on the other side of 1 third, every positive number after that is in my domain. So how wide is this graph? It goes forever this way, it goes forever this way. There's a hiccup right there and right there. Right? You have to write those things out. How about the range? So the range is how tall it is, right? So where does it start and where does it stop? Well, this one starts at negative infinity and goes up to zero, right? This one starts at negative infinity and goes up to, what is that value right there? The maximum point 35, right? So the range, the domain's up here. The range is down here, okay? The range would be from negative infinity, we're going up here, we're doing this one, all the way up to what the maximum y value is, 0, 35. Now that maximum y value is in fact reached. It touches 0.35, so that one has a um, bracket on it. And then here, what is the lowest y value there? Well, the lowest y value there is 0.394. So there's a little piece of graph in between 0.35 and 0.39 where there's not any graph, right? And then in this one, this one goes up forever. So lo and behold, we did everything we were supposed to do. Find the vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercept, the max, the min, where is the increasing? What x values make the y numbers go uphill? That's my question. And then the domain is cut into three parts because there's three pictures. And the range has two parts because this one goes up to zero, but this one goes up past zero and then comes back down. So you use this side and this one. Ta-da! Looky there. We're done with that guy. I'm going to stop and do another one in a different video. So here we go.